Tissues are a common item in many homes, we use them often, perhaps for a runny nose during cold season, or to wipe away a small spill on the table. They are also used for removing makeup, or even for drying a tear. These small paper sheets are surprisingly versatile. They are designed to be soft and absorbent, and importantly, they are disposable for hygiene. Many of us cannot imagine daily life without them. It is a simple product yet very useful. Have you ever wondered how these soft tissues are made? They seem so simple, just thin pieces of paper, but the journey from raw material to the final box is complex. The story of a tissue begins in the forest. Trees are the primary raw material for making tissues. However, not just any tree will do the job. Specific types are selected for their unique fiber properties. These fibers are the building blocks of the paper. They determine the tissue's strength and its softness. Two main types of trees are commonly used. These are pine trees and eucalyptus trees. Each brings different qualities to the final product. Pine trees are classified as softwoods. Their wood fibers are generally long and slender. These long fibers are very important for tissue making. They provide the necessary strength to the paper. Eucalyptus trees, on the other hand, are hardwoods. Their wood fibers are shorter and finer than pine fibers. These short fibers contribute a different quality. They are key to making the tissue feel soft. For facial tissues, this softness is highly valued. The blend of fiber types is therefore very important. It is a careful balance of strength and comfort. Eucalyptus helps provide that desired gentle feel. These trees are often grown in managed forests. Once the selected trees are harvested, their journey continues. They are transported from the forest to a paper mill. At the mill, the first step is to prepare the wood. The logs pass through a debarking process. Large machines tumble the logs to remove the outer bark. Only the inner wood, rich in cellulose fibers, is used. This clean wood is then ready for the next stage. The debarked logs are then fed into chippers. Chippers are powerful machines with sharp rotating knives. They quickly cut the logs into small uniform pieces. These pieces are called wood chips. Making the wood into chips increases its surface area. This is important for the efficiency of the pulping process. The chips are then screened to remove any oversized pieces. The wood chips now undergo the pulping process. This is where the wood is broken down into individual fibers. The most common method is chemical pulping, often the craft process. Chips are loaded into a large pressure cooker called a digester. They are cooked with water and a mixture of chemicals. This cooking happens at high temperatures and pressures. The process dissolves the lignin in the wood. Breaking it down frees the cellulose fibers. After the pulping process, the journey of the fibers continues. The output from the digester is a dark, soupy mixture. This is the raw wood pulp, often called brown stock. It contains the valuable cellulose fibers we need, but it also holds dissolved lignin and cooking chemicals. These impurities must be removed to create high-quality tissue, so the next crucial step is washing the pulp thoroughly. The cleanliness of the pulp directly impacts tissue softness and also its brightness and overall appearance. The pulp is passed through a series of washers. These machines use fresh water to rinse the fibers. The goal is to wash away the spent cooking liquor. This liquor contains the dissolved lignin and chemicals. Efficient washing is important for several reasons. It recovers chemicals for reuse in the pulping process. It also removes substances that could interfere with bleaching. Multiple stages of washing ensure maximum cleanliness. Once washed, the pulp is cleaner but still has a brownish color. For most tissues, a bright white appearance is desired. This is achieved through a process called bleaching. Bleaching removes more of the residual lignin. The result is a very clean, bright white pulp. Section 5. Weaving the web. The tissue machine's magic. The clean white pulp is now ready for the tissue machine. At this stage, the pulp is heavily diluted with water. It forms a slurry that is about 99.5% water and only about 0.5% cellulose fiber. This very watery suspension is pumped to the head box. The head box is a critical part of the tissue machine. It distributes the fiber slurry evenly across the machine's width. This even distribution is key to forming a uniform sheet. The tissue machine itself is a marvel of engineering. It can be very large, often stretching for many meters. From the head box, the diluted pulp is sprayed onto a rapidly moving continuous mesh screen. This screen is also known as a forming fabric or wire. As the slurry lands on the screen, water begins to drain. 
Gravity and suction boxes beneath the screen help remove water. The cellulose fibers start to interlock and overlap. They begin to form a very thin, wet web of paper. The speed of this screen can be incredibly fast. Modern machines can run at speeds exceeding 2,000 meters per minute. The tissue machine has transformed liquid pulp into a solid sheet. Section 6. Softness Engineered Drying and Pressing Perfection After the initial formation, the wet tissue sheet needs drying. It moves from the forming section to the drying section. The centerpiece of this section is usually a Yankee dryer. A Yankee dryer is a very large steam-heated cylinder. Its diameter can be 15 to 20 feet or even more. The surface of this cylinder is highly polished and smooth. This smoothness is important for the tissue's final feel. The wet tissue web is carefully pressed against this hot surface. Special press rolls help transfer the sheet and squeeze out more water before it contacts the dryer. As the sheet travels around the Yankee dryer, it heats up. The high temperature causes the remaining water to evaporate. The tissue sheet becomes significantly drier and stronger. A critical step that happens on the Yankee dryer is creeping. As the dried tissue sheet nears the end of its rotation on the cylinder, it encounters a sharp metal blade called a doctor blade. This blade is positioned at an angle against the dryer surface. It gently scrapes the paper off the cylinder. This scraping action causes the sheet to bunch up slightly, creating microscopic folds or wrinkles in the tissue. Section 7. Sized and shaped cutting and folding for convenience. The large parent rolls of tissue are the output of the tissue machine. These rolls are impressive in size, often many feet wide. They contain a continuous sheet of creeped tissue paper. But this form is not practical for everyday use. So the next stage is converting these rolls. Converting involves transforming the large rolls into finished products. This includes cutting, plying, and folding the tissue. The parent rolls are moved to specialized converting machines. These machines handle the tissue with care and precision. This is where the tissue gets its familiar look and feel. Many facial tissues and paper towels are multi-plied. This means they consist of two or more layers of tissue. For example, a two-ply tissue has two sheets combined. The parent rolls are unwound on the converting machine. If multi-ply tissue is being made, several rolls are unwound together. These layers are brought together to form a thicker, stronger sheet. Sometimes the plies are embossed. Section 8. Boxed and bound. Packaging and reaching your hands. Once the tissues are cut, folded, and stacked, they are ready for packaging. This is typically the final stage in the manufacturing plant. The packaging process is also highly automated. Machines take the precisely counted stacks of tissues. They carefully insert them into their designated containers. For facial tissues, this is usually a cardboard box. The boxes themselves are often pre-printed with colorful designs and branding information for the specific product line. These boxes arrive at the packaging line flat, machines erect them, fill them, and then seal them shut. The design of the tissue box is also important. It needs to protect the tissues inside, keeping them clean and preventing them from being crushed. Many boxes feature a perforated opening. This allows easy access to the tissues and helps with the pop-up feature of interfolded tissues. The materials used for boxes are often made from recycled paperboard. Section 9. More than just paper. The daily importance of tissues. Tissues are indispensable in modern life. We rely on them for many daily tasks, from managing colds to wiping a child's face or absorbing spills. Their convenience is significant. Softness is appreciated, especially for sensitive skin. This simple product offers comfort, 